I'm Leslie Cornwell, certified nurse midwife with midwifery business consultation. I have Amanda Wiley here with abundant life bookkeeping. Um, her and I connected, it's been about a year now. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Um, she was just starting her bookkeeping business, had a background with working with midwives, background in bookkeeping. Um, and it seems like over the last year when we were chatting before the recording started, she's doing very well. Um, I've asked Amanda to come back on. We did a YouTube conversation a few months ago, six, eight months ago. Um, and I just thought a live one would be perfect. Um, so I just, I'll let the people in, in the backdrops. And if you want to introduce yourself, Amanda, while they're coming in, that would be great. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Um, I'm glad to be here. I, uh, yeah, I, I was interested in midwifery from the age of 11 and, uh, and worked with a home birth midwife in my area for six years before I started having kids. Um, and then just wanted to be home with my kids. And so I, um, have done that for 18 years. And, uh, when I was ready to get back into, um, well, really bringing some income in to our home, but I didn't want to leave yet because I still have some young children at home. And, um, and so it's not, it's not my season to be involved on the actual birth scene yet, but, but I wanted to be able to help, um, help the people that I'm passionate about. I just love, I love midwives and, um, and the, and the people that, uh, doulas and the other people that serve birth, the birth community. Um, and so well, I think I, it's important to stress that so many people think, well, I love midwives, so I just need to become a midwife to support them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, you don't quite understand. There's supporting midwifing, the midwives, midwifing, the birth support team is so vital because there's just so much need out there of business resources, advocacy, support on the backdrops. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and midwives are, I mean, they're passionate about what they do. And I, I would say probably most business owners are like that, but midwives pour everything into um, their clients, you know, and, uh, and so it doesn't leave a lot for some of the background business, uh, business operations that still need to happen. And they're just exhausted. They're tired and the energy that they have, they need to be able to just continue to pour into their clients. So, um, yeah, so I'm excited to be able to support, support midwives with their bookkeeping. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And I see Molly had joined. We had a couple and I think their internet wasn't working. They'll come back. But thank you, Molly, for joining us. And hopefully I'll just watch for more people coming in. The goal is to do high level topics that bookkeepers are involved in and then give an opportunity for question and answer at the end. Um, and you you and I talked about it. We always do a disclaimer anytime we talk legal strategies, uh, accounting, bookkeeping. Um, you want to just go to your state local regulations and figure out and know everybody expertise a bookkeeper is not an accountant they can't tell you tax strategies they can't tell you they're inputting your data tracking your data for you so you can present it easily to the accountant um, but i think it's good for us to reinforce why a bookkeeper is important and some of these accountant version side of it but just stressing that you're not an accountant lawyer and neither am I. so <laughs> yeah thanks leslie yeah that's true i, I do try to tell people because some people don't know the difference between a bookkeeper and an accountant and I like to compare it to say a doctor and a nurse, um, you know, the nurse is there, they're keeping track of the vitals there. Um, you know, they're, they're there for the duration and the doctor pops in and does the higher level stuff. And so that's as a bookkeeper, um, I help my clients have their books together so they can take it to the tax preparer for some of the, either to get their taxes done or to get, you know, do their estimated quarterly taxes or, um, anyway, that kind of thing. So that's just the difference. Um, so do we just want to launch it? Can I just start? Yeah, let's dive right in. Um, if there's anything Molly wants to ask real quick before we get started, otherwise we'll dive yeah. right in. Uh, I don't have any questions right now. I'm driving. Okay, be safe. Well, I appreciate you joining yes. us and just listen. And this will be recorded later if you want to view if we pull something out. But I appreciate you being here. So, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I love to go over um, at, with midwives is just the importance of being of, of having a business bank account and keeping your business finances separate from your personal, um, especially when especially when you get into um, maybe being an LLC or um, or a, or a different entity than a sole proprietor. But either way, if you know what. <laughs> When you need to be able to defend yourself to the IRS, it's a lot harder when you're having to dig through your personal finances to do that. So I encourage everyone to start start a business bank account um, and 
you know, if you're using a credit card, do a, do a separate business credit card. Um, yeah. And if I can add a little bit to that, yeah. because people say, well, when I get to this level of my business, when I'm making money, I will transition from sole proprietor to LLC. And I'll, I'll worry about that receipt later because it's not that much. And I stress to people, as soon as you get going, even if you don't have your business yet, everything you're doing to work towards your business is receipts you're going to want to start tracking you want to start getting in a habit and as soon as you have that minimum because a lot of banks now require a thousand fifteen hundred to open a check in our savings as soon as you can separate the business from the personal it's better like you said for tax auditing purposes you want to be able to defend if you're commingling funds that vicarious liability risk increases especially when we do birth um, stuff particularly midwives you want to keep your personal assets as as much as possible separated from the business assets so that's the little two cents i'd love to add <laughs> yes exactly and so there's a way uh, you know to track say you accidentally use your business card it's not the end of the world it's just in your bookkeeping you need to make sure that you're tracking that as an owner's draw um you're paying yourself something uh and you're not tracking that as a business expense because then you're gonna start getting into that same liability that leslie's talking about so um so that's the first thing i just feel like it's so important for um for business owners, um, for midwives to just make sure that they're getting that set up first. Um, and the next thing you talked about, Leslie, was um, tracking receipts. And I know that's a challenge, it's a challenge for everyone. Um, and, and my recommendation is, um, I would just say, and I, I know a lot of people are, they're just old school. They don't wanna mess with the new technology, um, but this is an area that you would benefit from um, getting up to date and getting in the cloud because there are some different apps that make it so easy to take a picture of that receipt. And uh, I, I kind of looked up some IRS guidelines before we got on this call so I could just um, make sure that what I was mentioning was correct. And so this was just from the IRS that, you know, you can, it's fine to use an electronic storage system. And as long as the system includes an index, it stores it, it preserves it, it's retrievable and it can reproduce it as far as printing it out or whatever, you don't have to I mean, you don't have to keep the original. And so, uh, yeah, that's important to know because uh, it's hard to keep up with all those little receipts. And I don't know about you guys, but if I, if I have a receipt, like I don't, it, it takes like a couple of weeks before the ink starts wearing off. And so if you haven't captured that in some other way, um, you have the potential of losing well, and it's in real time. We know as healthcare practitioners that if you didn't document it, it didn't count. So yeah. people think, well, it's pretty unlikely to get audited. And you know, it is minimal chances, but for up to seven years, you'd have to worry about that. So if you can get organized from the beginning, have, yeah. like you said, the cloud-based folders, there's simple apps. I think the hard part is people think it's overcomplicated. They're nervous. It's too much to learn. And you help a lot of your clients with that. And I yes. help my clients with that. We, there's some great, easy apps. You literally, you take the gas pump, you look at the receipt you click with your phone it syncs and you can you can forward it to your office manager to organize for you you can at the end of the week when you're tracking your mileage and keeping an eye on everything you can just have a system and flow i think yes. the problem is we say oh i'll put it in my purse and i'll take care of it later and then your personal receipts get mixed with your business receipts and then you forget about it and like you said the ink wears off and yeah. and then you just say oh because the more that falls through the cracks it if you get audited, you're going to owe a lot of money back. And then you go the penalties and the fees. It's not just what was on that receipt. So it's really, really important. Just like we want to protect our licenses. We yes. in some states can be sued for up to 18, 21 years. You want to keep your documentation and you can do it totally electronic, easy. Option. Yeah. Yeah. Good systems to have. Um, oh, and so the next thing is mileage. I know um, it's important for midwives to track that, you know, we're a high mile, it's a high mileage um, industry. And, um, but so some of the things that I was looking over and again, you know, I'm not, I'm not your CPA, so definitely check with them. But um, some of the red flags for the IRS would be if you are claiming 100% um, that your car is 100% business. Um, and so, you know, if you're using your car for anything other than business, it's really best to just track your mileage. Um, I, I know one of my midwife clients that I see her, um, her mileage each month. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty, I mean, it's a pretty significant amount. Um, and so, but don't, don't do both. Don't do your gas and, uh, right. You know, keeping, 
trying well, to write off the gas in your mileage. Cents, yeah, my little two yeah. cents to add to that, Amanda, is each person is different. Some people it makes more sense for mileage tracking, and some people it makes more sense to have their business own it. But like you yes. said, if the business is owning it, it's exclusively used for business. You're not going to just one home visit a week and then you're driving it 90% of the time for your family that's not the business owning it. So you have to be exactly. very clear. Um, but the big thing I talk about is initially meeting with your accountant and having receipts for both directions, having for three to six months, your mileage tracking, plus having all the upkeep maintenance, because they can actually do an analysis and see which strategy you have to pick one or the other. You can't do both. Yes, not both. So I always give the example, if you drive a Prius and you go all over the place, mileage probably makes the most sense for you because you're getting the exact same. Is it 54 cents a mile this year? Yeah. Um, and so you're paying a lot less in gas and overhead for that vehicle than what the government would pay you. But if you drive a truck and many of us have SUVs because we drive a lot of supplies, yeah. um, it might make more financial sense if this is used exclusively for the business. So um, so there's great ways to do it. And I know you and I will dive into the tax deductions that commonly miss, but especially on the bookkeeping side, just keeping track of the records. Don't just try to guess your mileage at the end of the week because yeah. you drive all over the place and and they're smart. I mean, if you get audited by the government, they're not just looking at your receipts. They see your phone. They see where you've traveled. Like if you say you did this many miles, it doesn't take them much to figure out, did you really do those miles? Mm, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And if you don't have the receipts to back it up, how, how are you proving, um, proving that? And again, um, get on the cloud. I mean, there's just so many cloud-based things to, to help track your mileage that make it easy. I mean, you get to the end of your trip and you swipe one way or another, whether it was personal or business. Um, and it just makes that, it makes that easy. So, um, okay. So I'm glancing down the list of some of the things that we wanted to talk about. I know one of the things that, um, I was just looking at some of the red flags that an IRS would look, the IRS is looking at that might flag your, your business, um, would be that you're not reporting all of your income. So if you're a 1099 midwife, um, you're working for someone else. Um, the, you know, the government's getting a copy of your 10, any time, any 1099s you're getting and your W-2s and they're, and they're looking at all of that. They're pretty good at adding all that together. So, you know, make sure that you're claiming everything, um, all the income that you have. So yeah, especially the cash, because I get it a lot with the ladies that do the religious affiliation or the shared marketplace or families that have a high deductible or cash up front, like, you have to be, I mean, I know bartenders and a lot of things will kind of take a little off the top. It's not legal. And, and there is, I know a lot of midwives that just took to, they, they took a lot of cash and the government figures it out. They know the trends, they know the average, they know each occupation, even though we're a unique niche. I just stress to midwives, whether it's cash, credit card, insurance payments, whatever income you're making for something, keep an honest track of the income and expenses. Don't try to put any under the table, even though it's so easy. And um, they're like, well, how are they going to know? And I'm like, they know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, especially, you know, we're wanting to write off as much as we can. And, and they kind of, they know the typical deduction amount for your type of business and the income you're mentioning. And again, you just get red flags. So uh, we, we just want to be on the up and up. And, and so, yeah, so I try to keep my, try to make sure that my clients are not getting in trouble by presenting that, Hey, you need to, you need to be um, tracking this accurately. So uh, definitely want to. Well, I think one that. of the questions, if we could back up a little bit, Amanda, yeah. is just why is a bookkeeper important? I think I've sent you a lot of clients, your direction, especially being a business consultant and people would do it on their own, which I think is fine in the beginning. If you've got a good flow, we had a really good income and expense algorithm sheet that we created. Um, but there gets a certain point where it's just, it's too much time and midwife's time is so valuable. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to add your two cents. When is it good to add a bookkeeper on or why should a bookkeeper be on right from the beginning? Sure. Uh, well, some of that might depend on personality types, really, you know, uh, I think some people just have the personality, like you said, if they have the time at the beginning to be organized about it. Um, and then I have some clients who just hate bookkeeping and it was worth it from that for them, from the get go to just, uh, 
get a bookkeeper as soon as they could because they knew they didn't want to try they didn't want to keep up with it and they knew how important it was it is to, well, look it causes migraines i joked with my practice starting out my husband was doing it and he'd be like he'd only be able to look at it for an hour because all the numbers would muddle together and if you're not yeah. using like quickbooks or something auto syncing yeah. with your checking you're manually and then you're dyslexic and mistakes happen and then you're trying to figure it out like having someone i always stress leveraging the experts around you you know the yeah. ins and outs of how to categorize things so then you're not paying more for the accountant because they can't find stuff because you just put it in a long list versus like there's little things with bookkeeping that are really important to understand yeah, yeah. and i um you know i don't i specialize in quickbooks online um but i just encourage somebody I, and i think if you if you are um growing your business i really encourage you to do um a, a bigger program like quickbooks online um but if you're just getting started and you need something small there's there's a program called wave um it's not as robust as quickbooks online um but just find a system that you'll be diligent with and use it uh until you get to the point where you can hand that off to um yeah to a bookkeeper but i i know i i had a, a midwife client come to me who um i mean her, her books were just a mess i and it just happens quickly you know it's, you know if you maybe you as the business owner know how to do your bookkeeping, which I would, I would, um, I just know that that's not a large percentage of people because they, you don't go into midwifery because you love bookkeeping. You go into midwifery because you love pregnancy and birth and babies and, um, and woman care. And, uh, and it seems like it's an easy thing. Um, and it's just kind of crazy how much there is really involved. Um, so I don't want to overcomplicate it, but as your business grows and you have more expenses and maybe you're, you start getting into some larger purchases. Um, if you have a birth center, uh, you just want to make sure that those are, are tracked accurately, you know? Uh, well, and I think the important part is there's only so many hours in the day. Yes. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a real time thing. It's a system. It's a habit, but you, you start saying, okay, do I go to bed 20 minutes early or do I put all this data in? We're going to pick, go to bed 20 minutes early when we've been all up all night and we have a lady stirring and it just gets pushed to the wayside. We'll do it later. We'll do it later. And then it's three to six months later. Um, and, and I stress the importance of a bookkeeper, not just looking at the past trends in real time, but projecting. I like to do a lot of strategic planning and we have no idea if they don't have accurate books have you would be shocked how many midwives have no clue what money's coming in and out of their practices they're paying yes. themselves what they're comfortable with they don't know if they're at a place where they can add more staff they don't know if they're at a place where i'm like well how much are you spending on marketing i don't know how much are you spending on supplies are you keeping a certain trend do you have a budget i don't know i don't know that's that's the foundation of running a business you don't you have to know your trends you have to know is your income stream growing is it shrinking is your marketing if you want to add staff on in six months you need to have a budget to the side and and, and a, you have to know there's funds available to do that so yes. i think it's just the heart of a business is having accurate bookkeeping and real time accuracy of where your income and expense is at yeah i'll tell you leslie years years and years ago my husband and i had a home business it wasn't birth related but um we didn't we didn't do our bookkeeping we didn't really know the importance of it um we just pulled stuff together at tax time we thought we were doing fine in three years and um we came to just a sudden realization this uh it wasn't working it was too late to make better decisions um, and so I'm passionate now about helping people. You, you need to know your numbers or you can't make the best decisions. You don't know the health of your business. Um, yeah, you don't know where you're yeah, at. Especially if trends, like I always am mentioning, if you're starting to go out of a budget or also out of a trend, you readjust your fee schedule, you tweak it, you nip it in the butt while it's happening versus it grows and grows and you have no idea in the backdrops. You're buying extra inventory, things are expiring, you added more staff and you're wondering why you can't pay yourself. Like mm -hmm. you, it gives you a clear diagnosis of the health of your business. Like it is amazing. I would say half the consultants I work with don't have a clue what's coming in and out of their business and they're yeah. surviving and that's okay, but they're not thriving. Yes. And that we need birth workers to thrive so you can continue in your business and not burn out or, uh, yeah. But one of the things that I love doing, um, and the importance of using a, a, a good bookkeeping system compared to, um, and, and again, I know there are some Excel wizards out there. Um, but Excel, if you're using Excel, you're, 
like you talked about, maybe dyslexia or you're tired or whatever, and some numbers are getting transposed or they're changed. So you bump an algorithm in the backdrops and now you deleted something. Yeah. So Excel is a good baby step. If you're really like, I can't afford QuickBooks and you're like, don't want any app, like you want the basics and you're not this is, I think, above doing paper and handwriting like, yes, books. <laughs> yes, a little bit better. But the nice thing about an online something is it's pulling in the transactions for you. So you're not entering them. You have the chance to reconcile. So you're making sure that what is on your bank statement is what are in your book. So nothing's been missed or nothing's been duplicated. Um, and then I can run reports from my clients that show like all the previous months of this year. So they can compare, oh, this month, you know, boy, my expenses in this area went way up. Um, yeah. So when you're talking about, are, are you noticing an increase in, uh, or suddenly you can't pay yourself, you know, we're looking at, we're looking at um, the numbers from previous months and comparing so that they're, they're able to keep an eye on um, both income and expenses. Hey, we had a really good month. Um, oh, contractor fees were a lot more, um, you know, this month, but, you know, we had a higher income last month and we have a lot of babies that were due this month, yeah. you know. That and if you have trending it. services, if you're starting to transition, you had someone on your team that likes to do a certain niche and services and you can see the trends of the finances. Is it improving things? Are you getting a good revenue value unit? Um, I'm a big fan of looking at it for the future. I'm a visionary person. I'm a, a forefront. I like it to go and say, okay, it's getting November, December. I'm not going to use these numbers just to do for filing purposes, but should I be buying something for my business? Oh my goodness, we did do financially really well, and I have a good sense the next six weeks what's going to come in. Should I be making a big purchase? Should I be making a bulk payment to my marketing budget? I'm going to pay for it anyways, but now I can save on taxes versus, oh crap, now it's in January, February, we're pulling everything together, and I didn't realize I paid myself what I had to, I didn't pay myself, but the business got that income and I had to pay taxes on it anyway. So yes. you want to be proactive. I think with bookkeeping, people took look at it too much. I'm doing my thing. It's just a history. So I don't get audited by the government. And I look at it as this is like, you can be so proactive on a tax basis with your accountant yeah. by knowing these numbers and knowing where your practice is going. If you're growing and thriving, you now can feel confident. I'm going to add someone to my team versus I don't even know if I have the numbers. Is my fee schedule mm -hmm. even accurate? Oh my goodness. I could go into that, Amanda, where I have people consult me and they're like, is my fee, is, do I have a good fee schedule? And I'm like, well, tell me your overhead income and expenses in your budget. And they're like, I can't. I said, well, how am I supposed to help you fix your fee schedule yes. <laughs> when you don't even know where money's going because I don't know if this is accurate or not for you yeah yeah well and I um have someone else not not a midwife but in the birth field um that their um their income you know for the first two quarters of this year was like five hundred thousand but their contractors were four hundred thousand um you know and if they don't know that I mean they uh, yeah, they're missing a big picture. They see, oh, all this money's coming in, but they have no yeah. clue what actual expenses. People assume, oh, you've got a million dollar birth center gross revenue. I'm like, that's not the net. Like, what is your expenses? What are the overhead? What are you truly making in profit? Because people see the money coming in, see the, the claims, but they don't really do a good analysis of, because we don't like to look at bills. We don't like to look at the not yes. so fun part. So we try to look at the part that makes us feel good. Yes, <laughs> so. right, right. Perfect. So what were other topics on your list, Amanda? Okay. I just, I know we had discussed some of the, the things that might um, trigger an audit just, um, or how important it is to keep, you know, keep receipts. I know, uh, again, not your tax preparer, so definitely talk to your, talk to your CPA. Um, one of the things that I see business owners do a lot is trying to write off a lot of meals, travel, and entertainment. Um, mm -hmm. And, and that can be a red flag to the IRS again, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're familiar with businesses and what's a normal amount and what's not. Um, but it's super important for you to keep notes about meals that are, are used for business and, um, yeah, because they know even though we're a unique niche, we're not sales. We like if you're doing a receipt, you need to have if it's a restaurant, you have to put on the receipt. Who did you meet with? What was the topic? How long were you guys there for? And it's only up to 50 percent. Like there's two categories of if you can do 100 percent. If you're bringing in food for your staff on site, it's a staff meeting. You can write off 100 percent as of last year. But if it's um, 
if you're taking someone out for dinner, you're networking, wanting to get a doctor with you, you just write good notes on the receipt because how do they know you didn't take your husband out to dinner and yeah. versus like they need to know who was with you and you're not going to remember at that time. So yeah. you got a document and then you just say, what did you guys discuss? Yeah, I met out with an OB, I was taking out for dinner, trying to get a great collaboration. That makes legit. But if you're saying yeah. every other day you're taking the OB out for dinner, that, yeah. that doesn't, you got to be able to make it make sense. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, um, yeah. And again, just making sure you're keeping those receipts and tracking and, and, you know, making sure your travel reasons are legitimate. Uh, yeah. So it's important. You just have to be more careful. Like we did a perfect example, an amazing ultrasound conference this past weekend. And we were debating, how do we pay them? Do we give them cash? Do we do gift cards? Do we, what do we do? And I was like, well, I'd prefer not to do cash because that's even harder to defend. Gift cards I can handle. Like if we buy in a bulk and they see on our schedule, we had a big conference and they saw how many people came. Like, it's not like it's a week after the conference and now I'm buying $2,000 of gift cards. Like gift cards are yes. hard to track, but if they can see on the calendar and they can see you've been promoting a conference and you're putting everywhere in your marketing advertisement, a $25 gift card, they can put numbers together. Yes. So I think you just have to be more careful. The more you can actually buy something directly, like if you want to give a gift to your staff, that's income to them. People think, oh, I just, yeah. I bought them a nice dinner with their husband or a raffle for our practice. Like that is an expense and an income to them. And it has, if it's more than $600, you have to give them a 1099 for the year. So. Yes. Yeah. And those 1099s, it's funny. A, a lot of business owners just don't realize um, the kind of liability they take on themselves if they think, oh, well, you know, it's not super important. Um, but yeah, those fines and stuff, they, they can add up quick if you are not 1099ing the people that you're supposed to. So yeah, um, yeah it's important. Um, just trying to look over and see if there's anything else super important that I feel like we haven't touched on. I, I think the biggest thing is I love you do an excellent job having someone that understands midwifery. We don't have to explain our business. I mean, you live and breathe midwifery. I know a couple of our ladies on the call now were in your introduction. You've had multiple babies at home. You did some birth assisting. You love being part of the birth world, but with your family, your big family, your beautiful family, um, it just made more sense to do the bookkeeping side of things. And you get the world we're in. You get, and you know, all the little unique things to trend and to focus on. And you're passionate. I think half of what birth workers have are trying to find people that want to advocate for them that actually a passion of what we do yes <laughs> and I think I think um I think another way that my services are unique is um I'm available and I know sometimes it's hard to get hold of your CPA um or if you're using a larger book bookkeeping firm um and midwives hours are odd so <laughs> if you're tied up during the day when they're available and then they're not available when you are um, so I try to be flexible also. Um, and then I try to explain things well. So I don't just hand my clients reports every month. We go over, um, I do a video. We go, I go over them and then we can jump on a call if they have any other questions. But um, so it's important that I want you to understand your reports. Um, yeah, and it's not so, just putting the data in, but actually understanding what all those numbers on that yes, report sheet mean, having yes. that person on your team. So, no, I think you do an amazing job. And I've heard great, amazing testimonials from people about your resources and services. And I know the prices range just based on the size of their practice. So if anybody's interested in connecting with you and learning more, um, what's your website and company so they can be directed? And I'll put it at the bottom of the description on YouTube as well. Okay. Um, I'm just going to send you to www.birthkeeping.com. Um, I actually own the sister company, but I don't like bookkeeping that we talked about earlier, but my, my business that's focused on uh, midwives and birth professionals is birthkeeping. So uh, you'll find rates for birth workers there. Okay, perfect. So I see a couple of people are on right now. If you guys have any questions, I know I went over the big things. It's not a, it's a condensed topic, but it's a really important topic. So I appreciate everybody getting on. Does anybody have any questions that I'll put myself on mute and people can speak up? Cause we would love to answer anything that's unique to your situation. Okay. I always give a little extra time than I think I should, because some people are trying to get off mute or the kids are hollering, yeah. oh, it's Q&A time. Yeah, and you're like, um, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, well, if anybody has questions, I'm going to put at the bottom of the description on YouTube, how to get a hold of you and I. And um, yeah, I think 
those are the main topics. If there's anything big, it's really just keeping accurate trends of income and expense for your practice. Yeah. Real time projection purposes, history trends, like it's going to help with the auditing, the anxiety, knowing where your money is going. Like it's the, it's literally the blood of your business life force to actually have accurate uh, bookkeeping records. It is. Okay. Thanks, Leslie, for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. And everyone have a lovely day.